And I wonder what your approach was or, or how, you, how you prepared to tackle um, a moment in Russian history which still has extraordinarily difficult um, resonance for many, many Russians and indeed people abroad. Yes, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I fully prepared, but I don't know if one can fully prepare. Um, to answer your question sort of in a, in a, a very specific way, I mostly found myself reading and rereading them many times because the first time reading a text, you're just overwhelmed, uh, I think, with the stories. Uh, you get to know someone intimately, you watch their handwriting deteriorate, you see the members of their family die and their responses to that. So sometimes uh, it required many, many reads, uh, often just as a, a human being <laughs> and a sympathetic, empathetic reader, and then later as a scholar. Um, trying to uh, also distill some of the intellectual contributions. And so I found myself uh, bringing many different approaches, um, but always um, with great emotion, which I think is sometimes as scholars, we think we shouldn't be so emotionally invested. But I think with material like this, it's impossible not to be. And in fact, it's morally responsible to, to let yourself uh, feel those emotions and take the history of, uh, of this trauma uh, and the emotions that it brought out very seriously as a historical phenomenon. Yes, yeah, so there's quite a few things. Some of the diaries are pictorial, so they're all sketches. Uh, some of them are, are menus, uh, just sort of lists of what uh, was eaten every day or not eaten. Um, some of the diaries um, involve various kinds of uh, sketches and decorations, especially children often fantasized about what they wanted to be when they grow up or they tried to envision the front. So you can see a lot of drawings, uh, sketches of communal apartments uh, and keeping tabs on what happens to everyone in their apartment, who lives, who dies, who evacuates and so forth. Um, one of my favorite diaries is by an 11 year old who wrote on a calendar uh, and the calendar was imprinted with quotations of Lenin and Stalin and also had a feature where it would tell you what happened on that day in history. And he wrote his version as an 11 year old of what happened on his day in history. Um, and when he wrote each entry, which was often just a couple lines, he also signed his name. So what you have on the page is a quote from Lenin and then Lenin's name, and then you have a quote from this little boy and his name. So it's sort of parallel quotations, uh, and it's, it's a remarkable text to not only to read but to see. How did you choose which voices to represent? I mean, anyone who's read the, the book will gather that there are so many voices and stories and themes and sort of personal experiences which you, you couldn't include in one book. Um, was that tough and, and what was that process of selection? Uh, it, absolutely, it was, it was very hard. Uh, my, my goal was to bring in a wide variety of voices and one of the arguments I try to make in the book is that there are certain critical questions uh, or ways of thinking, paradigms really, that all diarists, whether they were, whatever their class or educational background or their age, uh, they all uh, really uh, gravitated towards these particular paradigms. So I tried to then show that in many cases by choosing unlikely examples. So in chapters on medicine, I tried not to choose medical professionals as much as philologists and artists, uh, workers, pensioners, who also engage deeply in medical research to try to demonstrate that it wasn't simply people pursuing their profession, but people drawn and inspired by completely different ways of viewing the world than they were accustomed to by virtue of these circumstances. So I selected for diversity, but as you say, there are so many, so many moments that are left out. 